Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. Tom, it's a pretty common thing to look in the life of a hospital and see what actually goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. It can be pretty daunting, pretty scary at times. Uh, reports from nurses, things like that. Uh, but we're talking about things getting stuffed in the nose. <laughs> and it comes off one of our maids. Uh, his kid has uh, come back um, from childcare and has had the old Lego up the nose. First time as a parent witnessing it and he's like, what the hell? I guess, you know, there has to be at least one time, right? It's a classic. Yeah. What's the matter? I got a Lego on my nose. How did, how did you get a Lego in your nose? Is that is that a Lego person head? Yeah. That's uh that's audio from the internet. That's not our mate. Just no, some no, no, American no. mate of ours. You know, <laughs> that sent in a recording of his kid petrified. But it is a classic, isn't it? Like mm-hmm. Lego is the the number one thing that kids are always shoving up their nose. Who knows why as well? I don't get it. Because I don't know why. I, I don't think I ever really put things up my nose, uh, except for a finger maybe here yeah. and there. <laughs> so that's what I was thinking as well. It's such a weirdly common thing that kids get things stuck up their nose all the time. They have to go to the ER, stuff like that. I don't think I ever did it. No. And we heard another story from our content director. Her sister would shove peas like peas, peas up her nose Heaps just relentlessly and the yeah. grandma would have to snatch her hands away. Apparently they'd have to uh, get her to block a nostril and blow. It would just like all these peas. Which, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe didn't like the taste of peas. Maybe they were hiding them. Maybe mm. saving them for later, a little a little snack. Just ingest them differently if you don't <laughs> yeah. like the taste. Yeah. But Tom, I do actually have a list here. A survey came out in Australia to say what the most popular things were that got stuck up kids' noses. Obviously, Lego is the big hitter. Yeah. But what would you say is after that the next most popular thing? And the second most popular thing for kids to put up their nose, I would have to say it'd be something along the lines of like a pencil or marker or something, Do you right? Reckon? Pencil and a pencil is on here. It's on the list, but coins is the next most coins? popular one. God. And up there as well, sultanas. <laughs> hang on, hang on a minute. Coins are pretty big and kids famously have small noses most of the time. But this is the thing. I don't know how it works. Kids just manage to find a way to shove anything up their nose, right? <laughs> it's it's, it's they They're hold pretty no, malleable. They hold no boundaries, do they? On the list as well, like I said, sultanas, Play-Doh, magnets, popcorn oh, kernels. Play-Doh. Imagine being st- like all blocked up because of Play-Doh. Mm. Yeah, and how's this one? Uh, marbles. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What got stuck up the nose, Adelaide? Maybe it was something you put up there yourself. Maybe it was your kid that got something sh- uh, shoved up there, got it stuck. We want to know what got stuck up the nose. Tom, we do want to go on the text line here from the Fresh Fam. Someone said, my son had put an apple peel, a rock up his nose. We had to turn his car seat around so he could watch the little bugger. Jeez. Hey, he's on high security. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make sure he doesn't shove anything else up. Got another text come through here. When I was four years old, I rammed 14 gum nuts up my nose. Wow. And had to go to the doctor to have them removed with super long tweezers. 14 is a fair effort. <laughs> 14's too old to be, you know, experimenting with putting things in your nose, right? No, no, no. He's rammed 14, oh, 14 gum, nuts. gum nuts. Sorry, yeah, that's huge. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. That's insane. <laughs> hey, let's head over to Clemzig. We've got Trish on the line. Trish, good morning. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, very, very well. Now, Trish, what got stuck up the kid's nose? Uh, yes, it was my daughter. She was about three and a half and she stuck a tic-tac up her nose. Wow. Oh, classic one. Yeah, tic-tacs. Mm. Did, yeah. did she have a minty, fresh uh, nose? nostril? Yeah. yeah, did it clear it up? Oh, look, we were in ED for like, I reckon it was about six hours. So it was a pretty long haul. Um, they managed to obviously retrieve it. But yeah, she hasn't done anything like that since. So... Yeah. Yeah, wow. It's funny, Trish, because on the survey thing I was looking at, Tic Tacs were one of the more popular ones to actually get stuck up a kid's nose. Oh, there you go, yeah. Trish, was it, and it was just the one Tic Tac, was it? Just the one Tic Tac, yeah. Oh, at least she didn't go for doubles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whole packet. What flavour, mint, or it was one of the orange ones? Tutti no, fruity. that was yeah. the orange ones. Oh, yeah. there hey. you go. All right. Hey, thanks for getting involved, Trish. We appreciate it. Let's head over to Flagstaff Hill with Sarah. Sarah, what got stuck up the nose? Okay, so it was my friend's kid. Um, my son was having a birthday party, and uh, the parents, we were sitting around having some hot chips, and... My friend's child was about three years old and she stuck a hot chip 
so far up her nose. Oh, God. That, like, it was, yeah, it was burning and she was crying. She couldn't breathe. And they were trying to put Pepper up the other nostril, trying to oh get Oh, my it God. To, like, <laughs> to just sneeze it out. She does it. Yeah, well, they said she does it quite often. Right, Sarah. So they're used to it. Did the, but it uh, didn't actually come out. So. Yeah, I was going to ask, did, was the pepper, did it work at all? Did it get any sneezing going? Because we've tried it, me and Tom, in the studio here, and uh, it almost seems like a myth, the pepper sneezing thing. Yeah, well, I think it had worked before for them, but not with this chip because she had it so far up, and she was, like, in in pain because it was really hot. Yeah, okay, and so at no point did she decide a- to stop putting it up her nose even when it was hot. <laughs> No, she was she was pretty little. Poor girl's about sixteen now. She'd be horrified if I was telling you this. Telling the story on, <laughs> on live thing, radio. <laughs> yeah, and another thing was my ex husband, his brother, they thought he was deaf and having all these learning problems for a while and it wasn't until after a lot of investigation they found those polystyrene balls from bean bags right down his ear hole. Really? Oh my god. And it's just been there for <laughs> years been there for years or Yeah. Just been there and they thought this kid was like you know, a little bit not so bright, but it turned out that he'd shoved these lots of them, polystyrene balls. <laughs> Never heard that before. <laughs> Human beanbag. <laughs> hey, Sarah, we've got a $50 voucher down to Big Shots Cafe Brighton coming your way. Thanks for getting oh, involved. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Have a great day. Cash is king, mm. is, uh, yeah. or, or so they say. I personally, I prefer to deal with cash, right, because I feel like I'm a bit less flippant. When I have cash, uh, it's all right there in front of me. When it's gone, so am I. Yeah, yeah. That's my it's, motto. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a weird one, though, cash, isn't it? Because I feel like it's getting rarer and rarer to carry around cash to the point that if I do carry around cash, people think it's dodgy. Mm. And they're just like, why? Oh, people have questions. Oh, how did you get that cash? Why do you have so much cash? And it's like, it's, it's I don't know. I, it, the bur- <laughs> birthday and Christmas. Jesus, like, sounds like you're right. <laughs> <laughs> It's from my grandma, if anything, around Christmas time. <laughs> but I've had, a, I've had a big problem with cash over the weekend and uh, I didn't want to do this, but it's on my mind. I feel like it has to be addressed. Mm. I'm bloody ticked off. Lyman Mungrel. Oh, jeez, it's ticked off, Tom. Wow. Callum, I've got an issue with you, mate. Well, you're bringing ticked off Tom oh, no. <laughs> to a personal level, taking yeah. it in the studio. Usually this is a social kind of worldly outrage mm. you have. Nah, I'm coming at you with wow, the horns. For the first time, okay. Yeah, the gloves are off. All uh, right, let's hear it. And you know what? Everyone listening, I'd love for them to get involved on the text line, 0428 927 927. Get involved in this conversation. You tell me whether I'm overreacting or not because I don't think I am, Callum. We're at the we're in the fringe time, right? Yeah, we're yeah. out and about, you know, and fresh. We're just off Rundle Street here, so it's almost impossible not to get amongst the fringe. Mm, definitely. And last week, well, over the weekend, we left and we were get a, we were like, let's get a beer together. Yeah. Right? Then we'll go our separate ways, never see each other again till Monday morning. Mm. <laughs> and we go get the beer. It's your round to go buy one. Mm-hmm. And you are sifting through your wallet. Right? Yeah. You pull out a $5 note. You pull out a $10 note. You have no more notes. So then Correct. You, you head into your coin purse. Yeah, it was, a, it was an attachment on my wallet. It's not a separate <laughs> coin purse. Don't listen to him, French fam. <laughs> and you start sifting through your coins and you chuck them all in. End of the day, you were 30 cents short. Yeah, what a bummer it was as well. I mm. mean, 30 cents short for a jug of beer. Uh, terrifying scenario. Now, any, any, any normal person would have been like, well, bugger, that's annoying. I guess I'll just have to get the card out for this one. No, not you. The bartender looks at me, takes my twenty dollar note, and sticks me with all your shrapnel. Yeah, yeah, it was. And quite... I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about a couple two dollar coins. I had eight separate silver coins, fifty cents, twenty cents. It the was, works. It was quite funny though because the bartender did it voluntarily as well. It wasn't even a discussion. They, she literally just looked at what was on the table, saw so your 20s, saw my coins, and she's like, guys, it's this easy, and just swapped them around, and you're like, what the hell? Yes, so, and, and my wallet, I don't have a big wallet. It's more like a card holder, if yeah. anything. There's not really any space for coins, just notes, and barely that. So now I'm logging, lugging around <laughs> all these 50-cent pieces 
not knowing what to do with them and knowing that also you owe me 30 cents. You've almost got your own personal <laughs> jingle now. Every time you walk, every time you walked around the pub, there was a little bit of clattering of coins. No like, more oh, sneaking coin... up on people for yeah, me. <laughs> the coin man is in town. <laughs> so I'm pet sitting is a major duty and the stress mm. level's already high. Uh, you know, with your own pet, but as soon as your the the pet of somebody else's is in your hands, it's even <laughs> dicier, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. just uh, it, it is like a bit stressful. You have to look after them, whether you know the he- people are going on a holiday, stuff like that. Being in charge of anyone's anything is always always a stressful time. Whether you're house sitting, pet sitting, baby sitting, mm. you know, all the kinds of sittings are stressful. Yeah, yeah, and it's not usually a relaxing thing, like you said, but. Heard a very, very funny story about pet sitting, and it comes from our content director, Sophie. Her parents recently were pet sitting a friend's dog, and it went a little bit haywire. They did something that they thought would be acceptable, but it turned out to only make it a bit more stressful, the situation. We've got Sophie on the mic here. Sophie, good morning. Hi. Uh, First things first, you're on the wrong microphone. Hello. Uh, I'm here. (laughs) Second thing, what happened? What what happened when the, with the pet sitting? Yeah, so my parents were pet sitting my grandma's dog and they've had dogs before and they're adults and have brains yeah, yeah. and they had Indian for dinner and for some reason they gave the dog um, Indian mm, and so dog. for the next two days the dog was very sick and yeah. was really upset and wouldn't come near them, Like was like, what have you done to me? I can't trust you. Um, and mum has no idea why they just... <laughs> Why they did that? Now, there's so many things that you have to be careful of yeah. dogs eating: chocolate, avocado, and I, I don't hear onion, garlic. <laughs> I don't hear like many cuisines that you should avoid. But I feel like curry is probably one of the big ones that you shouldn't give a dog. Do we know what kind of curry it was? So I think it was pretty spicy. It started with an M. I'm not a big curry like mass um, mass mass <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know why they've Known for this. being one of the spicier curries. <laughs> the dog's just like, did you not look at how many chilli pitches they were on the menu next to that one? <laughs> Three Poor and dog. a half is too many. Yeah, too many for a dog. Look at the equivalent. Yeah. So yeah, wow. the, dog, the dog's okay. Though. The dog is fine. Everything's yeah. fine. But I don't understand. Like, we've had dogs in the past. We don't, I don't know why mum and dad just... Didn't well, think. It sounds like, you know, giving curry to a dog, it wouldn't be lethal. Like, your parents, you know, obviously didn't mean but to like... cause any disturbance, <laughs> but it's just spicy things with a dog's stomach. Mm. Like, it's just not going to go down well. I um I maybe took it a step too far once with my dog, giving him a little bit of my Zinger burger, mm. but that's nowhere <laughs> that's near some, the some... same spice as a curry, for goodness <laughs> sakes. Yeah. <laughs> did, did they at least give the dog some damn Raiita? <laughs> Cool it down a little bit. <laughs> if somebody sticks it in, a dog that we dog, sit, dog sat was an ex-AFP labby dog. She was so smart, she trained the posties to feed her every time they delivered. Right. Bit of a hustler <laughs> on the yeah. streets. Yeah, that is smart. Uh, someone texted in, chicken kebab, only problem was the stick was still in the dog. $2,000 later Jeez. and the dog was fixed. That is huge. Yeah. Vet bills are always pricey, aren't they? Oh, 100%. Another text come through here. My grandma's dog, I was pet sitting, ate a rubber in the bin. Oh, God. Right. We had to go to the vet, get it removed. Once it had passed through the dog, cost so much money, never been more embarrassed. And the vet gave us a big chat about being more responsible. Jeez, sex ed class uh, from the vet. (laughs) (laughs) You wouldn't expect it on the day. (laughs) This one here uh, was pet sitting a bunny. Had some friends around for a barbie and some drinks. Someone brought a disposable camera and we took a photo with the bunny and the flash on the camera shocked the bunny. We thought we killed it. So the next day went and got a replacement one, took the old one out of its cage then and started digging a small grave. But then it woke up and then it ran away. We didn't see it again and never told the family. That's bizarre, isn't it? I mean, there's so many points in that where I just think, is this a true text? Is somebody somebody pulling a quick one by us, taking the mickey out of us, or has that actually happened? Right, that can't be a thing. Can it only, you know, rabbits back from the dead, (laughs) zombie rabbit just getting up and running off? Also, who's going out replacing the bunny? Just tell (laughs) him. Be honest. (laughs) Tom, when you go to a fringe show, you're there to see one of the acts... Not to be one of the acts. You know, you don't want the attention to be on you. Absolutely not. There's nothing worse than uh, the attention being put on you 
as you're in a fringe show. It happens a lot with comedy, obviously. Oh, big uh, time. People in front rows get uh, singled out. You Do know, you- if you try and get up and get a drink or leave halfway through, you will get heckled by well, the comedian. That is the fear of going to a comedy show, isn't it? That if you need to go to the toilet, someone will, you know, heckle you yeah. and, you know, it'll be a whole thing. You'll There's a good chance you'll get embarrassed by the comedian, so sure. you've just got to sit through it. Mm. And, uh, you know, something kind of similar, I guess, happened the other night. We were going out on Thursday. Thursday for a fringe show with a bunch of the Fresh crew. Yeah. And uh, we went and saw Matador, yeah. which is a big dancing spectacle, great music. Uh, yeah, a bit cabaretish. It was, it was cool. Yeah, it was cool. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Something different as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, don't really go to the dancing ones too often, but this no. one blew the expectations out of the water. But uh, we went in there and already, big mistake, haven't gone to the bathroom. I'm mm. like, didn't, I also didn't check how long the show would go for. It wasn't anything crazy. It's nah, about an hour I think or it was so, about an hour. which is actually yeah. quite modest. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's not it's pretty av- average timing yeah. <laughs> for most fringe shows. But uh, it's getting to the last, I reckon, ten minutes, and I'm starting to do the knee slap. You know, trying oh, okay, to you're yeah. trying to buy the time and distract yourself. You know, you're, you're hunched over. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're hunched over. You release. You, you're you at a point your where up. you're you're not focusing on the show anymore because you've got one thing on your mind, and that is to stay completely dry for the rest of the ten minutes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and uh, thank God it wasn't a comedy show because, like I said, the tensions would have been a bit higher. With, yeah, uh, <laughs> being pointed out. Yeah. I don't expect anyone in Matador to turn around from their burlesque dancing and point me out, <laughs> cut the music. But still, nonetheless, a little bit embarrassing because I really had to go and it got to the point where I thought, stuff it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to get up. Not but waiting any longer. I definitely did it probably in one of the more obnoxious ways where I just kind of, it was the spring of the moment. I just leaped out of the chair. It was a full leap too. So, so you were behind I me, wasn't, you saw it, right? Yeah, I was, I was like just behind and to the left of you. And you went from, like, sitting there sort of rocking back and forth, like, looking looking kind of ill. And uh, there, were a few, there were a few conversations being had just behind in our row about what you were looking like. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, you spring up. It was almost like... Almost like you cleared a foot off the ground as well when you got up yeah, and then just started running past these people. Yeah, I believe it was Taylor for Workday. She was sitting next to me. It was her prompt of saying, are you okay? And then I turned around and said, screw this pretty pretty vocally (laughs) and then jumped out of the seat. And what's crazy is because they try and cram so many people in these fringe shows. um, I had to, it was like a maze. As soon as I got out of the, the barrier of the first three people tripping over their legs, knocking a bit of food around I like got I'm like in a standstill then where I see I'm in this labyrinth of chairs where I'm like how the hell do I get out of this you just go for the leap just jumped over one knocked one over Jesus I didn't got know to, that got to the end got to the end bit where the girl was there and she's like oh do you want to leave and I'm like great show I just really need to go to the bathroom she looked at me like I don't care like, you, can, you can leave it's okay you're an adult mate yeah. <laughs> Everyone likes to fantasize about where they might retire, you know, fantasize mm-hmm. about retiring in a in a beautiful place, you know, mm-hmm. maybe in a different country, yeah. maybe a different state. Have you sure. ever put much thought into it? Yeah, Gold Coast. Goldie. Uh, Goldie. Yeah. <laughs> I love it that. I reckon that's a bad idea. <laughs> It's like at the end of your working lifespan where you go to relax, you just go to the most hectic spot in Australia. <laughs> well, That'd be right. After, after a considerable amount of research, I think I've finally figured out where I would like to pack it in yeah, and okay. retire. And it's none other than Germany. Germany. Yeah, Germany's an interesting one. Cool place. Yeah, well, I mean, not only is there things like, you know, Oktoberfest, laden hose, beers, uh, mm. plenty more to like about Germany recently because I've just learned they've got vending machines, like get this, stock all different kinds of sausages from bratwurst to bratwurst, right. bockwurst to barbecue meats. They've got absolutely everything. Some of these vending machines even have things like potato salad in them next to go with the sausages. <laughs> I don't know about the potato salad. I think because there's something about vending machines though where it's like, I don't know, the food can be a bit hit and miss. I don't know if it's refrigerated properly. That's so- because you're used to our vending machines, mate. These are German engineered. Germans are known Ooh. for their engineering. Mercedes are, Benz, are. you know. Think about that. 
They are they are known throughout history as being some of the best engineers. Their vending machines are top notch. Jeez, imagine looking back on history now and thinking, wow, I can't believe the Germans invented the sausage vending machine <laughs> that all other countries jumped on that time. It's, I mean, uh, it's an exciting time to live, isn't it? I mean, they've they've also got other vending machines that uh, stock kitchen essentials, so they're available to you at any time, like you know, eggs, milk, butter, fruit, and veggies mm. as well. But the sausage ones are the ones that are really catching my attention at the moment. There, there's apparently over five hundred and seventy thousand different vending machines in Germany. And they're always around, you know, these sort of shops. Yeah. And it's not to replace them. It's actually to try and complement the shops. So you go to the shop, you get one thing, you walk past a vending machine and be like, geez, the Bockwurst would go great with this. Right, yeah. Let's pop in a few a few coins. I don't mind this at all, really. I guess, like, you know, there is the hesitation that it could taste a bit weird, but I don't know. It's going to a dinner party. I don't party. think so. Imagine, like, just stocking up on a cheap vending machine snack for a dinner party. People would be none the wiser. I don't think you could tell, right? Yeah, well, looking at these vending machines too, right, you, you think of the vending machines that we're all used to. You think of Kale's 415 vending sure. machine, yep. for example. You know, we're used to that style of vending machine. These ones over in Germany, they've got a real, um, like, industrial sort of look about them. Like, it looks like a big kitchen fridge yeah, that okay. has the vending machine parts on the side so you can get all your favourite sausages at hey. any time, at convenience. Well, the age we live in, maybe we should prototype it and stuff a sausage in Kale's uh, 415 <laughs> vending machine. <laughs> See how he likes it. <laughs> Bringing a bit of Germany yeah, back yeah. to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.